Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Um, I'm shouting because I'm actually, I've had to really pump myself up to be able to do this video uh, because it's on a subject where there is just so much heaviness out there. And I was sitting here thinking, oh, I don't think I can do this video today. You know, I just, I, I, I feel heavy. And um, I went downstairs just to make myself a drink. And I thought, no, it's not you. It's the energy around this subject. You've just got to push your way through it. Um, so that is what we are going to attempt to do today. And the subject, if you haven't already seen it in the title, is... 5G and I have called this video from 5G to 5D because that's what I'm being told to call it by Archangel Metatron who is my main guide. Um, hello to new subscribers, hello to old friends. Uh, as I always say on my channel I try to do a variety of different subjects although to be honest it's not something that I really choose to do it's more that the guide that I work with which is Archangel Metatron one of the things that he's called is the grand orchestrator and what that means is that it literally is like this beautiful umbrella energy overlooking the earth and the wider cosmos actually and it's as though what are the things that we're meant to be looking at at any one time and it's why I, I sometimes do flit between subjects. You know, one week I will be looking at George Michael and Princess Diana, and then it's Tuesday morning and we're looking at 5G. The videos that will come after this will probably be on a completely different subject as well. But anyway, um, my remit here, what I've been asked to do, is to try to give a higher perspective on our response to 5G technologies as well as what we can do about them uh, to help counteract some of the more damaging and negative effects from them. What I don't want this video to be and what I don't want the comment section to be is just a whole load of negativity in terms of um, victim, us being victims to it because it's the polar opposite of what I'm being asked to do here. So if you want to go and research 5G and look at all the horror stories, please do. I'm not suggesting you do that, by the way. Uh, I'm feeling that what the archangels are asking us to do is to actually just sit with what is actually just a development on our planet, of which there have been many developments over many thousands of years. And as a species, we have always been able to evolve almost in terms of whatever has thrown up, um, either via the collective or via invention or via, via revolutions that have happened. You know, I'm talking about the industrial revolution, the digital revolution, which is what we are in now. Mankind has always had to adapt to changing surroundings and changing environment. And it's not just man that has to do that, it's also the animal kingdom, uh, it's the natural world and it's Gaia herself. Although I'm a very firm believer that Gaia, Mother Earth, is a sentient being who allows us to, to play out what needs to be played out upon her. And make no mistake about it, if uh, Mother Earth or Gaia chose to dissolve and let go of anything that we are doing on this planet, she, will, she would do that. And she has done that over many thousands of years. There is, I'm hearing the word tolerates, there is a tolerance um, that she allows upon her land. But when it goes beyond an intolerable level, she will literally be like the dog that shakes off the water from its back and, and, and releases what needs to be released. So it's really important that you understand that the whole 5G debate isn't just about us. It's also about the animals 
And animals have a way of evolving as well. Again, if you look back through millennia, animals have evolved as we have evolved and they will continue to do so. But equally, Mother Earth is also part of this. And it's not so much what we are doing to her, although I know that's a contentious subject. It's more along the lines of what she is allowing to be done upon her. Because no, make no mistake about it, she is not a victim. There is nothing about Gaia consciousness which is linked into victimhood. It's about allowing us to have the experience that we're meant to have upon this earth. Okay. So, um, I'm just wondering which way to go with this, where to start Metatron, because I had a pretty good idea of maybe what I was going to say, although I am just going to free flow this, okay? There's, there are no notes. Those are my notes. There's about five words written on that page. I'm just going to see what wants to come through. I do know that Metatron wants to bring it right back to us in terms of are you a master manifester or are you a victim of what is done to you? Okay, that's going to be the gist of what we're talking about. Um, and we're also going to be looking at the heart, the heart energy as this intelligent, innate source that we all have within us that is able to answer anything that is thrown at it. Be that something physical, be that something environmental, be that an electromagnetic um, wavelength. And I will just mention the electromagnetic spectrum because what we're actually talking about with 5G is a wavelength frequency which is part of what we call the electromagnetic spectrum and is uh, I think it's just important to put it into context okay so I've got this book here I don't know if this is going to be visible on screen but I'm going to put it up just so you can see that um, can you is it focusing in there let me just see if I can get this I don't know, I've got my glasses on, I can't see very well today anyway, but anyway, there we go. Hopefully you can see there, that's the electromagnetic spectrum. You'll see that colour wavelengths are here in the middle. Uh, we've got radio waves here um, as being the least um, harmful wavelengths. And then we go right up here to what's called cosmic rays. We've also got x-rays, we've got gamma rays. But 5G basically falls, sorry, I can't read, I can't see what I'm pointing out here. It falls around about here. You, you'll, you'll be able to see there's like microwave technology. Um, it's, it's linked around there on the electromagnetic spectrum. But you'll see that the electromagnetic spectrum covers many, many different things which you already have in your life. We have radios, um, we have TVs. Uh, let me just have a look now. Uh, we've got radios, we've got televisions. It distinguishes between AM radio and FM radio. And of course now we've got digital radio, um, radar, uh, microwave. So really we're talking about this end of the spectrum is where supposedly we have this problem with 5G. But Metatron is wanting to put it, put it into context, okay? And again, if you just look at that spectrum, it's quite interesting because I certainly remember um, the move from AM radio frequencies to FM. I, I, I can't remember when it happened. Was it the 80s? I don't know. I can't remember. But I remember this big thing about, um, about stations becoming FM frequencies. Um, and what this spectrum shows is that was actually the move from AM to FM radio moved us further along the electromagnetic scale um, so it became slightly less it was still safe but it became slightly more it was something that could impact the human body a little bit more of course what's happened subsequently is that we've moved from fm to digital radio now we're all very familiar with that and indeed, even television sets. Again, think about the evolution that's occurred with TVs. We've gone from black and white televisions in the 1970s to colour TVs to, um, well, to be honest, I don't even know the names of them now. You walk into a television shop and there are so many televisions you can possibly buy. And the, the really expensive ones have got technology in them that I don't even particularly understand. 
But again, it's moving you along that electromagnetic spectrum. And let me just come back and read some of some words here from one of the real masters of colour therapy. Um, this is a, a really old book by Theo Gimbel. And um, if you don't know who Theo Gimbel was, he was, I mean, he was, a, he was an amazing man, but he was um, one of the leading lights in uh, colour therapy. And we owe him an awful lot. And uh, I'm just going to read some of his words here, okay, because they're, they're absolutely pertinent. So he says, the universe is bathed in energy. During the births, lives and deaths of stars, galaxies and other astronomical bodies, immense amounts of energy are produced. Cosmic rays, gamma radiation, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, visible light, infrared rays, microwaves and radio waves, 5G would come sort of between the microwave and the uh, radio wave frequency, are collectively called electromagnetic energy. And they fill the inner and the outer reaches of the known universe. Um, so there's also something else. Hold on a minute. I just want to find there's some words that I read earlier, which are just like, wow. Right, this is by Charles Leadbeater. It's a book called The Hidden Side of Things. I just want to read you this paragraph because we have to put this into context, this whole conversation around 5G. The first fact which, is, which it is necessary for us to realise is that everything is radiating influence on its surroundings. And these surroundings are all the while returning the compliment by pouring influence upon it in return. Literally everything, sun, moon, stars, angels, animals, trees, rocks, everything is pouring out a ceaseless stream of vibrations, each of its own characteristic type, not in the physical world only, but in other and subtler worlds as well. Um, that is important because this whole conversation about 5G technologies and wavelengths is being done in isolation of all of the other wavelengths that are available to us to either balance and harmonize it or to dissolve it, okay? I actually feel to balance and harmonize it may very well be a better way to talk about it because I am hearing quite clearly that the, ho the horse has already bolted from the stable. And what Metatron means by that is that collective consciousness has chosen a path where it wants to go down a digitalized route. And there's no judgment from Metatron there in terms of the fact that you have chosen that because it's really easy to look around and say, yeah, you've chosen that. You've chosen this digital world. You've chosen this world where we're all looking at our phones the whole time. We're addicted to the technologies that were meant to free us, but actually are becoming, um, they're almost becoming, we're becoming slave to them. We're in a dualistic universe. So there are positives to be had from all these new technologies that are coming in. We want faster broadband speeds. We want faster connection, faster dial-up. We want it now, okay? And we want it better and we want it improved. Think of the pressure of a company like Apple, okay? I've got an iPhone here. Um, every year, or I don't know how often they do it, you have the queues of people, you know, snaking round the block to get the latest development from 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 you know the latest iPhone um, I have to be honest I'm going to sound like a complete old fart now but there's part of me which just I just don't get it at all to me I've got an iPhone I'm quite happy with it but I don't use probably 70% of of the um, function on this phone <laughs> maybe that's just my age but it's true of anything 
I, I'm recording this to you on a, a, a fancy camera, which I bought to hopefully improve the picture quality and faster upload speed again, you know, via the card to, to YouTube. Do I know how to use all of the functions on it? No, I don't. It's literally just point and shoot and pray, you know, let's hope it works. Um, but yet, the companies, whether it's Canon, which is the, the camera that I'm now looking at you in, or whether it's good old Apple, they have this pressure on them to give us the latest development. What can it do now? And it's as though we've divorced that demand, which is coming up from the collective, for bigger, better, faster. Give it to me now. What's the latest? From what then becomes the problem? you know, in terms of something then becomes out of harmony with nature. What we're doing is we're actually advancing along this electromagnetic spectrum and getting into areas that become slightly more challenging for the physical body to hold. But it has to be put in context of the fact that even with 5G coming at you right now, if it is coming at you right now, and your body struggling with that, which it may, it may do, we'll look at things to help alleviate that in a moment. But even if the physical body is struggling, what Metatron is saying is, well, hold on a minute, look at these other very powerful wavelengths and frequencies that you have available to you to counteract that. That's why you're not a victim. We are entering into an age where we are meant to become more empowered. And over the last few decades, probably longer than that, we've been given many tools. We've been given very powerful tools, whether that be the ability to be able to heal ourselves through Reiki, through any of the healing modalities that is out there. I teach Metatron colour healing, but you know, all I'm, I'm very open to any healing modality that comes from light, that comes from the highest source available. We've been given the tools to be able to heal ourselves. We've been given, Gaia has given us the most abundant gift in terms of her beautiful crystals that often can neutralise, absorb um, or negate any negative wavelength that is coming at you. We've been given symbols. We've been given so much. And it's as though we've all been guilty of this, myself included, which is that these tools sometimes aren't used. And we're entering a time where in duality, if we have something coming at us, which is perceived as negative in 5G, 5G technologies, which can create difficulties for the human body. Nobody's disputing that. I'm not disputing that. But we are then given the tools to be able to negate that. Time to start using them. Time to start rolling up our sleeves and not seeing ourselves as powerless victims of them who are doing this to us. And, it, and we haven't got any part in that. Oh, no. You know, we haven't got any part. We haven't been demanding, you know, quicker, faster, better. Yes, we have, actually. Um, no, we're not, we're not victims. We are master creators. At that point, Metatron is reminding me as well, please be very careful of your thoughts. We know this stuff. We apply it to everything else. We know that if we say to ourselves, oh God, you're stupid, you know, you're this, you're that, you know, being really critical of ourselves, that our our body receives that message and creates even more of it. You know, we, we are what we think. We know this, we know this stuff. But yet it seems that when a big subject comes up such as 5G, we forget all of that. And we go down the rabbit hole, you know? We, we look for all of the most terrifying statistics that we can and we, and we worry about it. And I know there's so much worry out there in, in the community at the moment. And what I feel Metatron is saying is, come on, you know? Um, yes, there is a problem, but it's not a, it's not a problem that is un, 
navigatable around, okay? And also remember that the more that you fear it, and the more that, the more that you fear it, the more that you're going to lower your body's own immunity, your, your body's own ability rather, to be able to counteract it and fight it. We know this, don't we? It's, it's if you're fighting a disease in your body and, you've, and you have a, a low energy about you, you're, you're very, you know, you have a fearful, low negative energy, then your body is going to have a much harder time fighting the disease that is within it. It's exactly the same if something is coming at you. So if you're imagining that 5G waves are coming at you, and but you're in a totally like fear-based state and a victimized state, well, I can already feel it. it's like the body's energy is just sinking like this because you're telling your body that something horrible is about to happen to it. You're bringing it even further in. OK, so you, we must all watch our mindset around 5G and we must try to. That's why I'm calling this from 5G to 5D. It, it, it does not escape my um, attention that all of the big upgrades in terms of digital and phones, we've gone from 3G to 4G to 5G or we are going there. OK, because I do think we will be going there. So rather than putting all your attention into fighting it, worrying about it, fearing it, which is only going to completely and utterly deplete you and lower your resistance, you know, it's almost like you're putting your hand up and saying, here I am, here I am, you know, come and get me. We do the opposite. We go from a 3D mindset, which is about fear and lack and victimhood, to a 4D mentality where we start to take ownership and we start to operate from love. We start to see ourselves as more than this material physical body and this material physical world that is doing things to us. We start to understand our place. We start to learn some tools. And then we move to 5, 5D. And 5D is about becoming not the master, because there are many other levels above 5D, but in terms of where we are now as a planet, becoming more into the mastery type energy. And the energy of mastery doesn't fear anything. The energy of mastery knows that creation lies within itself. And where does that creation energy lie? That creation energy lies particularly within the heart. I was watching a video um, yesterday evening and there was just one line in it which really struck me and I don't know why I had to even write it down because it's something I knew but it was just the way that it was said and this man said, I don't want to get into who the man is because it will take us down another avenue, the man said the heart is source energy. Just listen to that. The heart is source energy. If you've got source, God energy, sitting right in the middle of your being, if you just tune into that, that level of brilliance, of ability to create anything, can answer anything that is thrown at it. The problem we've got with 5G is that we're in a battle of the mind. We read the report, we get up, we get scared, you know, shitless, to be honest. Sorry, I can't think of a better word. <laughs> we get really scared, you know, by reading the reports. We go into our mind. The heart isn't in it anywhere. The, the heart is completely out of the equation at this point. We're all in the mind and we're trying to fight it with the mind. And we go into fear because we're in the mind. What about if you read the, well, I'm not even suggesting you read these reports, but let's just respond to the energy of 5G, not from the mind, but from the heart. If you go into the heart, the whole point of the heart's energy, which is source, is there is no fear. If there is no fear, what I'm being actually shown is that any 5G wave coming at you if there is no fear, 
I'm just getting like these wiggly lines. It's like they just dissolve. They dissolve. With intention, they dissolve. Okay? So that just feels very, very important that we have to go into the heart. We have to respond with the heart. Um, okay, Metatron is saying to me and reminding me, and many of you know this anyway, that the heart has an electromagnetic field around it. In fact, the electromagnetic field that is around the heart is a hell of a lot bigger than the electromagnetic field that is around the brain, the mind. I know the brain and the mind aren't the same thing, but you know, the head space, much bigger. If you just link into your own heart for a moment, and really what we're doing is we are, let's just connect into our heart for one moment. I'm just gonna bring Metatron in here. Feel into your heart energy. And acknowledge, is the word I'm getting, acknowledge that you have God source light within that heart. Whatever state your heart is in is immaterial. If you've had a broken heart, you still have God's source light within there. If you have a physical problem with your heart, you still have God and source light within there. It doesn't matter what the state of your physical heart is in terms of the organ or in terms of what's happened to you in terms of heart chakra. Within the space of your heart sits God. God sits within the centre of your heart. So just go into that space and let's link into a pure white light. A pure white light. And feel this white light as it gets more and more brilliant. Brilliant, white, sparkling light. And this white light has a temperature to it. And the temperature is actually quite hot. It's quite a hot, white, brilliant light. I'm being shown it's the heat is almost coming up from the engine room. Your heart is the engine room of you. And what do you put into that engine room? Do you feed the engine room well with positive thoughts, positive intentions, hope? Or do you feed it fear? And let's just imagine this beautiful white furnace light in the centre of your heart. I just want you to observe. Just for one moment, you're not going to harm yourself here. We'll correct it in a moment. Just pull in some fear with regard to 5G. And just see what that does to that white light. It starts to contract it. It starts to contract it. I'm being shown a white fire, a bit like in an old steam engine. And in an old steam engine, you used to shovel in the coal to keep the fire going, to keep the furnace burning, to keep the train moving. You are the train, okay? When you give it fear, it's as though it all starts to fizzle out. Not completely, because you can't kill God but you are contracting your God-like essence within your heart the more that you pull in the energy of fear around 5G. Let's step out of that now. Let's go back to that white light within the center of your being and let's transmute and, no, not transmute, let's transform the frequency of 5G that's coming at you and you can feel it coming at you because it is coming at you. And as it meets the electromagnetic field around this white light of your heart, it transforms to a fifth dimensional energy. From 5G to 5D, when it meets the electromagnetic field around your heart, 
What does this electromagnetic field look like? There is a torus shape. There is a torus shape, which is like two funnels, a funnel opening up, a tube, and then a funnel opening down, the torus energy. Okay, so just imagine that it's like a column and we've got the funnel pointing upward and the funnel pointing downward. Some of you know what the torus field of the heart is anyway, so you can go straight into there. But those of you that don't, just go with what I'm showing you. A column of light, white light, with a funnel going up and a funnel going down. And the white light flows out of the top of the funnel, in almost like in butterfly wings. Watch my hands. And then the white light flows down and it comes up through the open funnel at the bottom. And we have this beautiful circular motion which gets bigger and bigger as the torus field builds. Until you arrive at, and you don't even need to worry if you can't do this, Metatron will do this for you. Ask Metatron now just to activate the full electromagnetic field around your heart. And it becomes, what I'm seeing it is, it's like this beautiful cocoon it's like a flat donut type shape. That's what it looks like, like a flat donut shape. And it's around your whole body, in front of you, to the side of you, to the other side of you, behind you. And it's lit up with white sparkling lights. Beautiful grid of white sparkling lights around your whole heart field. And it's pulsating with purity. It's pulsating with cleanliness. It's pulsating with godliness. And when the 5G energy comes in and meets it, it's literally like it's meeting an electric fence. It cannot enter. It cannot enter. It doesn't matter if it's trying to enter from behind you. It cannot enter. It does not matter if it's trying to enter from your left hand side, it cannot enter. It meets the sparkling white light. It does not matter if it tries to come in from the right or the front, it cannot enter. But what's clever, what's clever is that it is denied entry, but as it meets, this powerful electromagnetic field that is around you, it transforms to a 5D energy. It has five in its name for a reason. We can change this. We are not victims, we are creators, we change it. And as it hits the white light, it transforms to a fifth dimensional energy which our bodies can safely allow in. And rather than this being a damaging wavelength which is going to fry our brains, our bodies, interfere with our organs, it becomes fifth dimensional energy which the heart is able to integrate, process and allow to electrify the body, the light body. It feeds the light body in a way that is unique and tailored to you. And it electrifies the light body at the same time as it grounds it to earth. It grounds it to earth. And what you become effectively is a mast you become a mast. All of the different um, masts that are put up around the world and are already there, which will be carrying this 5G energy, let them do it. You become a mast that counteracts it, not just for yourself, but for other people in your vicinity. You become the lighthouse. How clever is that? How clever is that? Wow. 
Okay, so you can open your eyes. You can stay with the expanded heart. You can stay with the, um, the, ele the electromagnetic field fully extended around your heart. Beautiful. Just wondering if in this book there's a picture of what I was seeing. This is when I wish I was an artist and I could draw it. There's not one in here, never mind. Okay, so thank you Metatron for that. But yes, the, the other teaching aspect of all of this is this links into mass consumerism actually. Um, this whole subject of 5G, wanting it faster, quicker, better. The digital providers are trying to give us what they think we need in a sort of twisted way. I understand that. Um, but we can change. We can change the consciousness of what is out there. If we if we want to, um, what do I mean by that? Sorry, it's my phone just going off. It um, it, it um, so I'm looking at the time. It's ten ten. That's interesting. It's ten. It was ten ten. What does that mean, Metatron? Why did I see that? Why is that important? Ten ten. We talk about 11.11 a lot, don't we, as gateway energy. 10.10. Not sure, might have to come back to that, guys. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just focus back in again. Oh yes, I was talking about mass consumerism. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, the one thing I also wanted to say is, you know, the, the, these phones, how do, how do we deal, basically, with the technology that we've already got here? Metatron said the horse has already bolted from the stable. So he's just given us a technique there to help us, okay? Let's just have a look at some other things that are out there. This is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. Um, let's just look at what we've got, though. I'm going to firstly talk about colour. I've mentioned white light. Um, white light, basically, is just hugely, hugely protective. Um, and it can, um, it can protect more or less, it can protect you from many things. I will just say at this point, I'm sure I've mentioned this on another video before, but back to Theo Gimbel, you know, the godfather of color therapy, one of the stories linked into Theo, I wondered if there was a picture of him here, but no, there isn't. You see, even that says something. This book was written in, um, when was this book published? Don't know, but there's not even a picture of him in here. You know, now, if, if you created a book now, you'd have the picture on the front, front page, wouldn't you? Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> so it's quite a high vibrational energy that we've just been working with, and now I'm trying to speak. It's like, come on, give me a break. Um, why did I pick this book up? Let's go back to Metatron. Oh yeah, colour therapy, Theo Gimbal, thank you. Thank you, Metatron, yeah, I need you today. Um, Theo Gimbal was in the concentration camps in the Second World War, and uh, what happened was uh, many of his friends and colleagues um, got put to death. You know, they were the ones that were chosen to go out and, I don't know, be shot or whatever happened, whatever horrendous things happened. We don't need to go into that. But Theo Gimbel always managed to keep himself safe and he always credited it with protecting himself with golden light, actually. So he used golden light and he used to imagine golden light around himself um, when, I, I guess, you know, the guards came in to select the people, you know, to either go into the gas chambers or... Uh, or to be shot and he was never chosen and he always put it down to the fact that there was this angelic presence um, via the gold light that he invoked he asked to be there I think he saw it and then he invoked it every time and it, it just kept him safe so never ever think that color therapy um, you know color as a healing tool is just a nice to have color is one of the most 
powerful healing modalities that is out there okay it really is you know back to the images here on the electromagnetic spectrum look where color sits on the electromagnetic spectrum this is all the radio waves which we're all okay with that here we've got x-rays you know and, and the stuff that we find very very hard for the human body to integrate colors right in the middle of it all okay color and of course all the different color all the different colors have different wavelengths as well um so color therapy is something that can help you what colors the golds the whites um i am going to bring in one of my two of my sprays actually which i felt i feel are good for just helping with shielding ourself okay shielding ourself um these are just other tools i want to give you and the two that i'm going to say maybe they're really obvious um the earth elemental okay the earth elemental and also archangel sandal von bronze okay these two um archangel sandal von bronze is linked to the earth star energy so it'll just help to ground both of them have an earthing energy to them okay and so it's almost like anything that gets thrown at us um we can bring it down through us and uh earth it and remember what i said gaia is also doing her part here to help create the balance and the harmony so what is being done on the surface that she is tolerating because we have chosen this path we have chosen to become more digitalized you know we can't just abdicate responsibility and say they are doing it to us a we voted them in they're only in power and in control because we are allowing it that is the truth. So she is tolerating it, but equally she will help us to transmute it. So again, it's just a very good spray for helping to, um, to allow any energies to, which may come at you just to flow through to be transmuted into Mother Earth. Um, let me just spray the Earth Elemental. Let's see if we've got a message from Gaia. she's presenting herself as a mother and this came through I think in a previous video but along different lines do you remember in my May video Metatron showed himself as the father who pushes the child out because he knows that the child is capable to go on the path you know the packed lunch is packed um, the room has been booked for the child for the night go out you, you know it's safe well I'm getting a different message here from Gaia this is like the mother who is have i mean i know this myself because i'm a mum to teenage girls so this is the analogy it's like you have to allow them the space to make their own mistakes and it's very painful to gaia to watch actually what is happening um it isn't with her blessing that these things are happening it's the fact that she's tolerating it because she is a sentient being who has signed up to the process of duality on this planet what does that mean what that means is that gaia herself planet earth also agreed and signed up for the lessons of duality to play out upon our planet and 5g is just another example of that there are two ways that you can look at it there are two ways that you can deal with it there are two ways that it can either interfere with you or you can transform it to something higher so she's like and the reason why she's sad is not because of people like us who've got the knowledge and the wisdom with the tools that are being given here to transmute it to transform it to not go into fear she's sad for the people that won't listen the people that will go down the rabbit hole who will just buy into every single last bit of doom and gloom who will lower their resistance who will go into massive fear and who will just have the flag that says come come and get me you know come and hurt me because i am disempowered come and hurt me because i am disempowered you do this to me i'm a powerless victim oh no how terrible is the world look what they're doing to it now the opposite of that is to stand up and say no i am empowered so she's not worried about us that have the 
that want to follow the guidance that's coming through from spirit here and deal with it in that higher vibrational way she's in pain for the children that are going out and even though the textbooks are in front of them they don't want to look at it they don't want to learn it and partly why they don't want to learn it is also because of this addiction this rampant addiction to give it to me now faster better higher you know not higher is maybe not the right word faster better you know give me the latest invention what's the latest upgrade going to do harmony has to come in i'd actually quite like to go back to the days of the old flip phones <laughs> i think we should start a revolution for that <laughs> let me pull a card for mother earth i've got the native spirit cards here by denise lynn let's just pull a card for gaia but she is she's like that mother which is like oh you know i'm gonna have to let them go out and um and learn the lesson learn the lessons are they victims or are they powerful manifestors? I hope it's, and it's that, that's what the mother does. It's like, oh, and I hope they do well. I, I hope they learn. I hope they can, it's like the mum who sends their kid off to the university. You know, I hope they do well. I hope they, I hope they don't just squander it and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Haven't gone through that phase yet. Right, Mother Earth, one card from this deck. And then we'll do a few more crystals. And a final message, so. Gaia, one card. She's saying as well that sometimes people, Grandmother Earth, okay, she's brought her own card up. I'll read the message that goes with this in a moment. Um, she's saying things are changing people are becoming more active people are starting to understand that they can make a difference um even in my newspaper this weekend there was like a double page spread on things you can do to just help the environment um and there were there were about 50 different things actually and um you know from not buying things coated in plastic to um, eating less meat, to, I don't know, lots and lots of things. Um, and even if you looked at a list like that and just chose three things off it, it would probably help. It would help, of course it would help. And why I mention that is because it, again, it gives you power back. It makes you feel like you can make a difference. I think what we've been up against is this energy of, it's just like it's all going to hell, you know? It's just like it's all on a downward spiral. Um, and really, if you look at this card, Grandmother Earth, look at that beautiful sun there. The sun will always rise, you know, there will, there's always hope. There's always a new day. It depends how you greet the new day. Let's just read the energy that goes with this card. See what she wants to say through the card. Grandmother Earth. Um... Grandmother Earth provides the trees, the plants, the flowers, the rivers, the streams, the oceans, the mountains and valleys, and supports us all with her bounty. She's stable and strong in her devotion to us. You are supported and loved, even if you're not always sure of it. Strength is growing within you. Don't rush, slow down. The seeds that you plant now will bring abundance in the future, but only if you take the time to nurture those new beginnings. Take time to plan your future carefully. Don't rush into anything. Uh, you are safe. Um, and then it says, in terms of the journey to deepen your connection to her and to bring security in all forms into your life, walk barefoot on the earth. That's good advice, actually. Very good advice. Place your hands in the earth or make investments. Imagine the strengthening, grounding energy of the earth filling you in your life. Yeah, that thing about walking barefoot on the earth is really important. Um, and it's easier to do in summer, of course, when it's warmer uh, for those of us in uh, climates which aren't always hospitable. Um, I remember a teacher saying to me that it's very good to stand barefoot in the dew in the morning, you know, on the grass. Um, you just soak up. You think about dew. It's almost like God's blessing for the day, isn't it, upon the plant 
kingdom and if you you you, you soak that up uh, it's like you're getting the you're like you're getting goodness from the earth and again to help cleanse you um mother earth is saying here that there's a thing about the feet of course are one of the places through which toxins can leave the body which is why i was recommending the earth sprays earlier because it helps to do that it helps to get them out um but again um another uh, another tool is to stand barefoot on the earth um particularly in the dew and it's like that that dew is actually cleanse it's like a cleansing energy it cleans your feet of anything that you may have picked up over the last 24 hours or the last week sometimes you can't do it every day uh, no excuse in summer though for you know a lot of people because I just you know it's all very well saying oh when am I going to do that well when you do that is when you're pegging up your washing most people do that at least a couple of times a week I seem to do it every single day so I take my shoes and socks off now and I stand barefoot when I'm doing it and to me that is just a very easy way that I can incorporate that technique into my everyday life okay all right a few other crystals um shungite i'm sure you've all heard of shungite it's a black stone this is a um, an organite um shungite actually which one of you made me um thank you so i forget your name right now but anyway it's beautiful isn't it um and i think i know who made it but i'm not going to say in case i've got it wrong <laughs> And this one's obviously got the seed of life on it as well. So it's got shungite, it's got organite, and it's also got the seed of life. So we've got the sacred geometry going on there as well. So shungite is a very good stone to help to um, dissolve, uh, not dissolve, absorb uh, EMF frequencies. It's really important though that if, if you're using a piece of jewellery, whether it's a pendant, whether it's a bracelet or anything, to do that job, again, another one of the tools that maybe you wear, for goodness sake, make sure you cleanse it regularly, okay? Uh, I, I actually wore this pendant myself to a healing I had a few weeks ago. And um, the first thing um, the healer said to me, she said, uh, you know, I think you need to cleanse that necklace. Because again, they're working really hard on our behalf. I'm being shown they're almost like a set of lungs okay um now this is a funny story i remember when i was about eight and we had a, a talk from you know don't the, the the don't smoke talk you know at school when i was about eight i don't know whether they'd even do this now but i remember to this day they bought in two lungs you know obviously people who died and they were they were real lungs and one was a non-smoker's lung and it was pink or you know normal color and they bought in a smoker's lung and the smoker's lung was just it was it was gross it was gross you know it was really gross it was just, ugh. anyway and i always remember that and that's what i'm being shown here because at the end of the day any tool that you use this becomes a bit like the lung and what it will do is it will be Again, you're going to be hopefully doing that technique I showed you earlier in terms of the heart field, but this is also something that's practical on a daily basis. So when it starts to have soaked up too much of it, make sure you cleanse it, okay? For me, I always put them out in moonlight, sunlight. Uh, you can wash it in water, although be careful, it ends in it. I was always told that crystals ending in it tend to be water soluble. I don't know about shungite, but just be careful with it. Um, or put it over incense but don't just do it don't just sort of like put it over incense for two seconds and think it's done for me when I cleanse my crystals particularly crystals that do a lot of work like this one does that went out for 24 hours on my balcony in sunlight and in moonlight and I only brought it in when I felt it was done you know again go into your intuition if you need to use a pendulum use a pendulum but most of the time you can just use your intuition you know when it's ready okay when it's cleansed so shungite um hematite 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 that beautiful bracelet I got sent by one of you recently isn't that gorgeous so that's hematite um black tourmaline which I don't have to hand um, I was also asked by Metatron to bring in good old amethyst, okay? Sometimes the old stones, the ones that we've all probably got knocking around our homes, are um, invaluable. I'm, I'm hearing amethyst is also very good. I've also got a black moonstone. I was told to bring a black moonstone in. And pyrite. Pyrite is the... Um, pyrite is that... Can you see... 
can my camera show you? It's the little, the little squares of metal there. That's pyrite. Pyrite also, I'm being told, is good. Oh yes, and then the big news in terms of the crystal world and 5G, Herkimer Diamonds. Herkimer Diamonds. Those of you that follow me on Facebook know I did a little mini video yesterday on the, uh, what would it have been, 5th or 6th of uh, May, on the fact that this diamond, this Herkimer Diamond, I had put out on my balcony over the Taurian new moon and it's just suddenly woken up, literally. I never particularly even liked the crystal before. It had a bit of a story. I was wondering whether to give it away. Put it out and it's just suddenly got loads of rainbow inclusions in it. And a few of you have contacted me and said, yes, mine has suddenly woken up, you know. And I looked at the qualities of Herkimer Diamond it's got many different qualities. It's very good for opening up the crown, but it's also a very good protector um, in terms of electromagnetic smog. So Herkima diamonds as well, okay? They are a good stone to be using. In terms of symbols, the ones that you expect me to say, I'm going to say, which is the, uh, the flower of life and Metatron's cube. These are all tools. I'm not saying that you have to use all of these things. I'm just giving you ideas for you to go and research and tune into and see which ones that you feel that you might like to incorporate. Remember the most important weapon in terms of um, transmuting and dissolving all of this. Can you remember what it was? <laughs> your heart, your heart. OK, your heart, which holds God's light, is your most important weapon and keeping it fed with positive thoughts, not fear. OK, that's the most important. Everything else that I'm showing you, these are just add ons to that. OK, these are crystals that can help. Herkimer diamonds, shungite, amethyst, pyrite, black moonstone, um, hematite. Did I say that? And then the symbols. Um, what would we do with the symbols, Metatron? Well, I mean, you can buy, um, you can buy little um, stick on dots, they're called. Um, put the link below in the, um, the, in, the, in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. And you can place them on the back of your mobile phones. I've seen that before, they're like little dots. I used to have one on the back of my phone, where the hell's it gone? You see, I've forgotten to do it. I think I replaced my phone six months ago and I, I lost the dot. It literally is. It's a, it's, a, it's a piece of technology. Let me just see if I can find the company as I'm talking about it. Um, let's see if it comes up quickly. Electromagnetic dot. Does that bring anything up at all? Yes, it does. Energy dots. That's what I'm talking about. Energy dots. OK. Um, and they look like. They don't look like that. They look like that. OK. And you just stick them on the back of your phone, put them on your computer, um, back of your TV. Again, they just help to deflect, transmute the, the energy. Um, you could also set up a grid if you wanted to in your home um, uh, based on Metatron's cube, based on the flower of life, um, linked to, pro link to, no, not protection, he's saying shielding, okay, shielding. This could be one that you do for your home, he's saying. Okay, thank you. Because you can't always walk around with one of these, you know, carrying this around with you. <laughs> you carry your heart with you. So, you know, that, that's the most important thing. You're, all, you're always protected if you're in your heart space. And you're doing what I've already talked about in this video, plus having the crystals and the sprays if you want to. But with your home, you could easily um, set up a little grid, which is to do with shielding your home from the smog, the electromagnetic smog. And on that, you can put some of the crystals that I've talked about. You can also maybe put some affirmations. You know, my home is clear. My home is clear and healthy. You know, each room is clear and healthy. Um, I am clear and healthy. Um, only wavelengths of uh, positivity and um, love 
and health can enter my being and my home, something like that. You know, use your imagination a bit, use, use the creativity that God has given you. <laughs> All right, I think that's probably it for today. Let's just end with um, Sandalphon and the bronze spray. Sandalphon is always known for helping us to take steps upon the earth. Um, sandal fon. He's got the name Sandal in his name. Sandal fon. Feet. How we walk upon the earth. He's saying, please don't, please don't go into fear about putting your feet upon the earth. That's the worst thing that you can do. As soon as you go into fear about putting your feet upon the earth, because the earth is toxic and the earth is this and the earth is that, you make it even more so. He's saying, please tread with love and light and joy and health and abundance upon the earth. And let that be not just in your mind. Let, not, let that not just be in your heart. Let it be in your feet. Let your feet do the talking. Yeah, that feels a good place to stop. Okay, everyone, I hope that helped. From 5G to 5D. Make your choice. Let's go for 5D, shall we? Much love. Bye-bye.